Recently, one of my coworkers told me something that I found both funny and sad about the meeting that they were in. They said that they didn't remember a single thing about the meeting because they were bored and there was nothing for them to do. If you want to create a collaborative and engaging meeting, you can use the Whiteboard Teams app to do that. So today I'm going to walk you through the new Whiteboard app and some of the cool new features that have been added. And if you hang out until the end, I will also show you how to access the Whiteboard app outside of Teams meetings so that you can collaborate in all kinds of scenarios. So let's jump on the computer and learn about this application together. I find that Whiteboard is most often used in a Teams meeting. So let's start by taking a look at how to set up a Whiteboard from meeting details. In this scenario, I have scheduled a brainstorming session with my coworkers about a new class that we are creating. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on the meeting to view the details. Here at the top of the screen, you will see that I have a whiteboard tab. Please note that you will not see this tab until after you've scheduled the meeting and at least one person is added as an attendee. Let's click on the whiteboard tab to launch it. And when the application opens, you will see a navigation pane on the left. First, you have the selection tool, which allows you to move the canvas around. Then you have the inking tool, which allows you to hide and unhide the ink menu as you see blinking on the screen right now. And then you have the plus sign, which will allow you to hide and unhide the create menu. On the right hand side of the screen, you have your settings menu. There are a lot of options here for you to use, such as when you're done building the whiteboard, you can export it as a PNG image. Enhanced ink shapes automatically is turned on by default and you will see later in this demonstration how this option is useful to smooth out some of the shapes that I'm going to draw using the inking tools. You can choose whether or not the other participants of the meeting will be able to edit the whiteboard. And then the last useful option is to format the background. Let's take a look at formatting the background. This option allows you to choose from several different colors for the background of your board. One of the reasons I choose to use this formatting option is because some of my colleagues have vision problems and the bright white board is very hard on their eyes. I generally choose a light gray or dark gray color to make it easier for them to view. You can also choose grid options. One of my favorites is wide rule. This allows me to format the background of the whiteboard to look like a piece of paper. This option is useful when participants of the meeting are writing comments on the whiteboard using a stylus from a tablet or a phone. For this demonstration, I'm just gonna leave it as a solid background. As part of my pre-meeting setup, I want to add a few items to my whiteboard so that when my colleagues get into the meeting with me, it's very clear for them to understand how I intend to use the whiteboard in the meeting. The first thing I want to do is navigate back over to the left-hand side and select a template. If you recall, I said this was going to be a brainstorming session, so I'm going to look at the brainstorming templates. I am going to select the third template, and I'm going to drag and drop it onto the canvas. As you can see, the template seems to be a little bit small. However, whiteboard is an infinite canvas and you can zoom in and out and make things as big or small as you like. So I'm going to use my mouse to reposition the template and zoom in to make the details a little bit easier to read. Now you can read the details of how this template is supposed to be used and I'm able to start adding in the names so that I can prepare for my meeting. And as you can see, my name didn't quite fit in the space, so I can adjust the box and make it a little bit larger. Now we've seen an example of how to use a template. Let's go to the notes and look at an example of how to add in a note grid. You can see that there are several different colors to choose from. I'm just going to grab the yellow note grid, drop it on the canvas and resize it and then give it a name. Now when the meeting starts, each participant can find their name in a column and start entering their ideas. During the meeting, we'll vote on what should be included in the final ideas section and we'll type them in the note grid. I have one more thing that I would like to add to the whiteboard as part of my pre-meeting setup. I'm going to go to images 
and I'm going to locate a banner that I created for our news article that we publish for every single training event. The image appeared over my template, so I'm going to grab it and move it to another section of the canvas. Now, if I zoom in or out on the template, you can see that the banner image might be a little hard to read. So I am going to grab it and resize it to make it easier for my colleagues to view. The next thing I'm going to do is add some context to this banner so that people know why it's on the whiteboard. I'm going to select text from the navigation menu, resize the box, and type in my message, do you like this banner? And now my coworkers know that I want their opinion on this piece of content. And that's all I have for the pre-meeting setup, so I can close this whiteboard and wait for the meeting to begin. Now, of course, you can always set these things up during the meeting. I'm just using this as an example. In this next part of the video, we will take a look at using the whiteboard while you are in a meeting. Once you've joined the meeting, you will use the sharing options to present the whiteboard. In this example, I am using the web version of Teams. In the desktop version, the sharing options are in the upper right hand corner. Hover your mouse over the bottom part of your Teams window and the sharing tray will appear. On the right hand side of the screen, you will see the whiteboard application. It took a moment to load, but now my whiteboard is being shared with everybody who joins the meeting. If you want to stop sharing the board at any time, hover your mouse over the bottom left hand corner and you will see the stop presenting button. Now we're going to look at some additional options in whiteboard. They're available at any time. I'm just choosing to demonstrate them during a meeting. I want to draw my colleagues attention towards my banner. So I'm going to go to the navigation menu and I'm going to select a shape. I have several different options to choose from. And in this case, I am going to choose the arrow option. And then I'm going to drop it onto the canvas. I can move it around and I can even change its color. Maybe yellow will be a nice color in order to grab some attention. I can grab the arrow, hover near one of the handles and rotate the arrow so that it looks like it's pointing from the question to the banner. Another nice feature that was added to whiteboard is reactions. When you click on that, you can see different options like applause, smiley face, check mark, X, etc. An example of how this might be used is my coworkers can use the green check mark to say that they like my banner and place it underneath and then resize it so it's easy to see. Or maybe they don't like my banner and they can put in the X and then resize that as well. And then once everybody has voted, we can decide whether or not to use this new image as our banner for our news article. Now we've seen an example of each of the items on this navigation menu. We've added notes, text, shapes, reactions, images, and templates. If you're finding this video helpful so far, please press the like button so that it can spread to more people. And just for fun, I've added an additional image to this whiteboard, which is my favorite like button. Now let's take a look at our inking options. I am going to close the panel to give us more room to work with. And notice here at the top, we have three different pens, a highlighter, an eraser, and a lasso tool. If I click towards the bottom of the pen, it's going to open up an additional dialog box. By default, the thickness of the pen will be set to three, and you can scale that all the way up to six. You have several different choices of color for the ink that you use. And you can also add arrows to the front or both sides of your inking. So let's take a look at how to use our pen. And for the fun of it, I'm going to choose the rainbow ink. Now that I've selected it, I'm also going to choose the double arrow. In this example, I want to draw a curved line from one image to the other. One of the reasons I like to draw arrows rather than using shapes is it allows me to be a little more flexible with how I draw the image. 
I didn't really like how that first arrow turned out, so I'm going to try drawing it again. And this time you get a clearer idea of the arrow at each end. Now we have the perfect reason to use the eraser tool. Let's get rid of this first arrow that I drew by selecting the eraser and then selecting the arrow and there you go, it's gone. You can quickly switch between the different tools on the ink bar such as grabbing the highlighter and drawing over a specific part of the canvas. Earlier in the video, I pointed out this enhanced ink shapes automatically setting. Now let's take a look at what it does for us. So let's say I want to draw a shape on my screen, but I'm not very good at drawing with my mouse, but that's okay because whiteboard has now made a perfect rectangle for me. Now the reason I chose this image is I actually want to make a frame around my banner and the boats. So I'm just going to move the rectangle and size it appropriately. The last thing we're going to take a look at on this particular whiteboard is the lasso tool. This is useful to group objects together so that they can be deleted all at once or moved all at once. With the lasso tool, I am going to select the entire area and notice the light blue outline. And then there's a dotted line around everything to let you know that they are grouped together. And now I can move or delete them. Now that I'm done with this whiteboard, I can stop presenting or simply hang up to end the meeting. After the meeting is over, you can access your whiteboard through the chat or through the meeting details. At the beginning of the video, I did say that there was another way to access whiteboard outside of Teams meetings, and that's through the whiteboard application from office.com. You will have access to all of your whiteboards and be able to create new ones from this application. So let's go ahead and create a new board. When it opens, it will automatically be called Untitled Whiteboard. Just click on that and then you can edit the name. For example, I'm going to call this one Heather's Board. Notice that we have all the same options that we had in the Teams meeting, including changing the background. The primary difference you'll see is the share menu over here in the top right hand corner. This allows you to share the board to anybody you want. When we looked at whiteboard from Teams meetings, it was automatically shared with everybody in the meeting. So let's go ahead and click the toggle for share link on, copy the link and send it to any of your coworkers that you would like to collaborate with. And then now we can start drawing on our canvas and filling out the whiteboard just like we did before. And there you go. Now we have learned how to use the whiteboard app in Teams meeting or in the standalone app so that you can create more engaging and collaborative workspaces. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please consider subscribing and give this video a like so it can spread to more people. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.